They began at 9.15 every Sunday morning, starting with Deacon Jackson uh, via Facebook and here live at the church. Our women's class with Miss Helen. And then we have our online class with Sister Coleman. Our midweek Bible study with Reverend Coleman starts at 6 o'clock every Wednesday on Facebook Live. Our ways of giving, you can text the word give to 205-509-4044. You can give online. You can mail it in or you can come in in person to give. Amen? Amen. Let's continue to keep our families in prayer that are going through something right now. Those that have lost loved ones. Keep them in your prayers. Those that are sick, shut in. Keep them in your prayers. And let's not forget, keep the caregivers in your prayers as well. They need prayer as well. Our scripture this morning, it comes from the Gospel of Matthew. Matthew Matthew, the 18th chapter. No, I'm sorry. Let me get it together. All right. I lost my place. All right. Matthew, the 16th chapter. I'm sorry. Starting at verse 15 and reading down to verse 18. And it reads, And he said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Blessed art thou, Simon, Bojan, for flesh and blood have not received it unto thee. But my Father, which is in heaven, and he said to them, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. The word of God for the people of God, amen?
As our urchins prepare to come, prepare your hearts and minds to give a portion of that which is God has given to you. Now it's time to give back to him. Amen? Amen.
If it's the material things that we think we have that makes us happy, we're sad and mistaken. We love you, Father. We need you each and every day. Father, watch over them. The sick and the shedding, Father. Keep them in your grace. Help them to get to where they need to be, Father. And Father, you've already said in your word that your son went to prepare a place for us when we are here no longer. So Father, we know that no matter what happens to us, we're still with you. We're still with you. Keep us now, Father, as we continue to carry on Father, watch over the shepherd of this church. Keep him strong. May he continue to bring us the word that will give us strength and give us the knowledge of you. Father, we need you now more than ever. This world that we're living in right now, Father, is going through a whole lot of changes. From COVID to unpeace. We need you, Father. We need you right now. Father, watch over the minister that's going to bring the word today. Give her a word on her. Let it capture someone's heart this morning, Father. Because we need it. We need everything that we can get from you. And even though, Father, that you're not, you're not. You're not one that holds your love from us. We just want to continue to follow you. When we're lost, guide us. Come into our hearts and fill us with what we need. Renew the right spirits in us, Father. If there's anything that's evil, Remove it from us. Clean us up. Clean us up best we can be clean, Father. Watch over this church, Father. Each and with every one of our members, whether they're here or not, we know we'll come back together again one day. That goes without saying. But keep us as we go on right now, Father. Let us be of you. And let us learn from your darling son, Jesus Christ. And Father, we'll be so careful to give you all the praise and all the glory. Yes, we will. We ask these in your darling son, Jesus Christ's name. Let every heart say amen. 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 amen.
God, I don't know where you would be. Thank you, Chapter 
fifth verse. Yeah. And it reads like this. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. I'm going to read it again in case you didn't get it the first time. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. Will you bow your head, will you bow your head with me for a word of prayer? Gracious God, we come before you. Before we ask you for anything, oh God, we thank you for everything, God. We thank you for being good, and we thank you, God, for being kind. But most of all, God, we thank you, oh God, for your mercy, oh God. Now, oh God, I ask, oh God, that you would hide me behind your shadows of the cross, oh God, that people, God, would only see, hear, and know you. Oh God, in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Before you take your seat, look at your neighbor and say, be careful where you fall. Look at another neighbor and say, be careful where you fall. I began this argument this morning by taking you back to 2017 where a nutritionist was experiencing the weather dance. This dance is called when the weather is bad and there are road closures, icy roads, and sometimes snow causing many healthcare professionals to stay from hotels to halls. The significance of the weather dance is to ensure adequate care is provided to patients in spite of conditions of the weather. For over 30 years now, this nutritionist had experienced the weather dance. For doing this weather dance had not only grew this nutritionist's confidence in providing adequate care to patients, but it had grown the nutritionist's confidence in the Lord. Isn't it amazing, my brothers and sisters, that when you can get reverence where reverence is due, it will begin, you will begin to learn in leaps and bounds beyond your imagination. For this weather dance had caused this one nutritionist's ear to become hypersensitive to what the Lord was saying. For this nutritionist understand, understood that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. That meant that whatever the Lord was doing, this nutritionist knew that the Lord always had a plan for whatever the Lord was doing. The nutritionist understood that wherever the nutritionist failed, the Lord would work it out. There was a strong trust in the Lord, understanding that the Lord always would work it out. Today, in 2017, and the story was no different. For two hours later in the story, this nutritionist would fall, but at the right time. For early before the break of day, the Lord woke the nutritionist to prepare for the weather dance. But this time, there was something slightly different, for that something was yet to be determined. But the feel was different. The weather dance did not have the same feel that it has had for the last 30 years to the nutritionist had been experiencing something new and unexpected. The nutritionist expected to experience the same weather dance, for here it was that 30 years had the nutritionist had expected and experienced almost the same weather dance time after time. Can I project to you this morning that something and what the Lord will always do sometimes God will prepare you to experience something different than what you are expecting. What do you do when what you are expecting does not align with what you are experiencing? Normally, whenever the voice of the Lord called for this nutritionist to get up extra early in the weather dance, it was to prepare for call-offs and other things such as this. But today, it was preparing this nutritionist for the nutritionist. What do you do when what you are expecting is not what you are experiencing? But today, it was to prepare the nutritionist for the nutritionist heart. For in a few minutes, the nutritionist 
would be on the floor having a heart attack. Be careful where you fall. I'm not a doctor, but I talked to a cardiologist a few days ago, and he told me the two most important things of the heart is the rhythm and the circulation. That's why when you have a heart attack, you only have a few minutes to get your heart back pumping and the blood back circulating because a lot of damage can be done when you have a heart attack. And for many of you, you're just like the nutritionist in the story. The Lord has told you some things, but because your expectation is not aligning with your experience, you won't move. You won't even get up. You're too lazy to make any movement. You're listening, but you're not moving. You hear the Lord, but you won't go. Because your experience is not aligning with your expectation. Because you can't see the whole picture. So stop being disobedient. And get up. Because oftentimes what happens is, you're in the wrong place. Because your expectation and your experience is not aligning, and so you won't move. You're falling into temptation because you won't listen. You've, uh, you've lost out on opportunities because you won't listen. You've missed out on jobs because you won't listen. Because your expectation is not aligning with your experience. But if God would show you the whole picture in the beginning, guess what? You would never move. Because you couldn't see the whole picture. Imagine if the nutritionist would have gotten up. Would not have gotten up. Because the nutritionist would not have understood what it is that the nutritionist was feeling. So guess what? This nutritionist was experiencing the weird weather dance. Some things are meant for you to understand. And God is often protecting you from you. God is often protecting you from you. What do you do when God is protecting you from you? Huh. And many of you are questioning your calling and who you are in God because you can't see the whole picture like God. When Paul was talking to the Thessalonians in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 24, he said, the one who calls you is faithful and will do it. Paul knew it will require a great deal of faith. Uh -huh. You're throwing in the tower because you're getting discouraged because it's not going as you planned. Uh -huh. Now you want to quit because it's not going as you planned. Uh -huh. Why? Because your rhythm is and your circulation is all off and you're not aware that it's off and many people are on the verge of a spiritual heart attack uh -huh. and they're unaware or they ignore the signs of the heart attack. Why? Because their expectation has been based on their experience. But you have to have a conviction that goes beyond what you are experiencing. That even when things aren't going the way that you predict, that you've got to protect your heart, that you can confess that God is able and be aware that no matter where I fall, that I know that God is a good God. That's why Paul said that be not weary in well-doing. He wasn't just randomly talking. He knows that sometimes you're going to get weary. He knows that sometimes your heart is going to get a little weak. Because the heart is the house of who you are. That no matter how spiritual you are, you're going to get carnal sometimes. And Paul knew that sometimes you're going to get weary along the journey. And if you aren't careful, Paul is telling you that you will find yourself falling in the wrong place. So you've got to protect your heart because a frustrated heart will lead you to a non-circulatory heart, will lead you ultimately to a blocked heart. And the only way you will get weary, the only way you won't get weary is that you've got to block your heart. I'm getting ahead of myself, but 
Paul knew that when helping you is hurting me, I gotta let you ain't get go. That's, that's another thing. Uh, don't worry about that. But this life is a marathon. It ain't a sprint. And by the time we get to Proverbs chapter three, we've already seen in chapter one to fear God. We've already seen in chapter two to hear God's instruction. Yes. Because why? Because if we can reverence God, we can hear God. I know. If we can hear God, we can trust God. Yes. Take says, trust God with all your heart. And so many of you can't trust God because you have to learn to reverence God. All right. Reverence God gives you confidence in who God is. That's why your parents taught you to say, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, yes, sir, no, sir, because they were teaching you respect. They understood if they could get you to respect, show reverence to your teachers, to your elders, they could get you to listen to your teachers and your elders. If they can get you to listen, they can get you to learn. If they can get you to learn, they can get you to discern. Or if they can get you to discern, then they can get you to trust in the right people. That's a spiritual thing. <laughs> so first, we see the demand. Uh -huh. Text says, trust. trust. With all your heart. Uh -huh. Trust becomes hard when you have blockage. Mm -hmm. It becomes difficult. Mm -hmm. It becomes difficult when there is no consistency. The heart is the house of who we are. Uh -huh. It has to be a consistency to beat properly for me to live a healthy life. When I don't trust God, I begin to impose my desire on God because I'm not living a healthy life. So then I want to demand everything on God. Have you ever met yourself when you want to demand on God? You demand on him, God, I need you to do this by tomorrow. God, I need you to, 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 to do this next week. I need you to do this because you don't trust him. There is no trust in him. So you begin to demand God. When I trust, I understand that I can't impose my will or desire on God. Some people believe that they can demand God to do what they want him to do. But guess what? The Bible says trust in the Lord. Not trust in Perry. Not trust in Coleman. Not trust in insert your name there. But trust in the Lord. So the demand is on you. The demand is not on the Lord, but the demand is on you. But the problem comes in that God gives us free will. So you think that you can put a demand on God because God has given you free will. You think that you can demand God to do something because he allows you to dress the way that you want to dress. Because he allows you to get the weed that you want to get. Because he allows you to get the shoes that you want to get. Now you think that you can put a demand on him. <laughs> all he wants you to do is trust him. That's all he wants you to do. With all your heart. Trust. Whenever God shows up in the Bible, it's never because he's demanded. But because he is 
revealed. You can't place a demand on God. Can I tell you a secret? You ain't holy enough. You ain't righteous enough. You can't impose your agenda on God. Y'all ain't gonna admit that trusting God will have you moody at times. Because you in a battle against the flesh. Because your faith is trying to trust God. But the flesh is frustrated. Understand, God is trying to stretch your flesh to strengthen your faith. Y'all ain't gonna be honest to him for you. I'll be honest. That trust in God, it can be a mess at times. It'll make you think you're losing your mind. But understand that God is stretching you. He's strengthening your faith. Because if he can strengthen you, he can make your ears more hypersensitive. It's the process of life. He becomes greater in you. I know y'all don't want this kind of preaching. Y'all used to be up there hooping and hollering, but that ain't what the Lord gave me. Because greater is he in the world. And if he's going to be greater in you than you in the world, he's got to stretch you at times. And sometimes it makes you feel like you're losing your mind. And it'll make you feel like you're going crazy. So, the, nutri the, 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 the nutritionist could have stayed in the bed and got a little bit more sleep. The nutritionist could have stayed asleep when the Lord tapped on the nutritionist's shoulder. But remember, stretching our flesh will cause you to do some things that you don't want to do. Sometimes the Lord will wake you up at hours that you don't want to get up. Because the Lord is stretching your flesh. Things you don't want to do. Get up when you don't want to get up. Stretching your faith will strengthen your trust. Faith and trust are cousins. They cousins. If you can't have no faith, you ain't gonna have no trust. Because if I ain't got no faith in you, I ain't got no trust in you. And that's why I'm losing my mind. Because I ain't got no faith in you, so I don't trust you. And that's why you're always in an ongoing battle. The battle is real. And so that's why you can't have reverence for God because you can't respect him. Because respect comes from within. Because respect and reverence are family members too. Because it's rooted in love. When I was young, I thought my parents had some, some of the most ridiculous rules. <laughs> they was ridiculous. And one of the most ridiculous rules that I thought they had was, yes ma'am and no ma'am. They told me to say yes ma'am and no ma'am to some people I didn't even know. Who are these people? Um, when I got to college, I started hanging out with my friends, my chilling friends, and I thought it would be wise to make my own rules, you know? But as, as life happened, I came to understand that what my parents was trying to teach me was reverence to authority. Because if they could teach me to respect authority, they could teach me to hear instruction. That if I could be attentive to learn from authority, I would begin to discern and shift Watch this, and not be able to hear the crazy stuff that people would try to sell me. You know, the stuff that people try to tell you. Fine. The foolery, I can sift it out. And hear with my heart. Fine. Trust in the Lord. With all 
thy heart. Because if I can learn to trust with my heart, I wouldn't fall for anything. I know. They were teaching me life principles with the spiritual doctrine at a young age. Because if you can learn reverence to people, you can learn reverence to the Lord. The problem is so many people never learn to respect authority in the world that it's hard to respect God. So we put a demand on God because you can't respect your boss. You can't respect your parents. You can't respect your children. Yeah, you need to show some respect to your children too. Because you can't respect the homeless man on the street. You can't respect the cashier. You can't show no respect to these people. And then you put a demand on God. So you have a problem with respecting God. That's why you can't trust him. And you wonder why all your prayers is, Lord, do this. Lord, I, I need you to do this. And you never can just have a prayer where all you're doing is reverence. God, I thank you for, for waking me up. God, I thank you for being a good God. God, you're so wonderful. You're so awesome. You are the king. You, I thank you for the shoes that I got. Some people ain't got no shoes. And everything is a demand because you think that you're worthy. You think that you're righteous. You think that you're holy. Because we don't understand that the common denominator of reverence is love. So some of us never really understand that God is what? Love. There has to be a patience and there has to be a consistency. So the first lesson in reverence has to be self-discipline. If we can't be disciplined with ourselves, if we can't wake up and tell God, I thank you, if we can't wake up and have time with the Lord and make a decision to spend time with him, we never really know who he is. We never really hear what God has to say. So we can never really respect him. We can't trust him. So we can't depend on him. If we can't depend on him, we definitely can't lean on him. So that's why we never learn to depend on God. So the text says, trust him. The nutritionist didn't know all the details, but there is the trust. The miracle is in the trust. The miracle is already there. And so the text says, trust him. But then we see the dependency in the, in the text. For it says, lean not to our own understanding. For the Bible declares, lean not to your own understanding. You have to declare to yourself that you can't go back to placing a demand on God. You can't go back to doubting. You can't go back to making the same decisions, to falling back to the same decisions. You've got to know that you've got to be still and know. You can't throw it in the towel just because it gets hard, just because you want to do what you want to do. You've got to trust God. I'm reminded of the story of Simon Peter in John 21 and 3 that after he had denied Jesus, Simon Peter had fished all night, yet caught nothing. Caught nothing. Jesus showed up. Jesus said, drop your net on the other side. Let the net on the other side. People of God, it would have made more sense to me if God said, take the net to the other river. It would have made more sense to me if we would have said, take your net down the street. Why? Because Jesus said, drop your net on the other side. So the fish was on the other side all along. Lean not to your own understanding. Be careful where you fall. If I have trust in him, the Bible declares that I can lead to my own understanding. For the fish, 
The Bible tells me that the fish could even hold all that was in that net. But what I like about that text is, is that it says fishes with an S. I'm not no English scholar. I tell you all the time. But what I've discovered is, is that the word fish is singular and plural all by itself. So John is here prophesying that God is getting ready to put an X in your miracle. That's the penalty. That's the penalty right there. Lead not to your own understanding. Remember, the nutritionist, God said, get up. The nutritionist was in the hotel doing the weather dance. What I discovered was is that the nutritionist was not that far away from the job. The nutritionist could have said, let me get just a little bit more sleep. Well, after the nutritionist got to the job, shortly after that, the nutritionist found herself in her office having a heart attack. Later, what I learned was is that the Lord had prepared a nurse for that very, for that very moment. One nurse had prayed for the entire moment for that very time over and over again. Let's look at it for a minute. For the Lord had been telling this nurse all week to clear the way. Lean not to your own understanding. So he told her to pray over another nurse's hands. That same nurse that would be pumping in this lady's chest for pumping the blood and the circulation until the ambulance arrives. That's what leaning not to your own understanding means lean not to your own understanding. You have to be careful where you fall, but that means that you have to put trust so your ear will be fine-tuned to hear what the Lord has to say. That's why you have to guard your heart so you can hear what the Lord is saying. The Lord also told this same nurse to pray and clear the path. They had to safely clear a path in the office for the nutritionist to lay. So be careful where you lay. This is so funny that when you lean not to your own understanding, that God will clear ways that you don't even know that he is clean. Seek him first in all that you do. To lean not to your own understanding. you got to be careful where you fall. But if you are careful where you fall, that means that God is doing a great thing. you got to be careful where you fall. For the text says, trust and lean not to your own understanding. Be careful where you fall. you got to trust in your own understanding. You ain't got no understanding. God has it all. You ain't got no understanding. God has it all. He got to lead and guide you every step of the way. Not only do you trust, but the text says in. The word in in this text means that there has to be some movement. If I'm going to put all my confidence in the Lord, there has to be some movement, some sign that all my heart belongs to the Lord. You serve it inside of your expectation and your experience. Your heart belongs to the Lord. Let me make it clear. We're going to, oh, you got to be careful where you fall because when you trust in the Lord he has your heart he has your heart it's always better it's always better to release your control because when you are in control you don't have any faith you don't have to understand it all but you just need to always trust God to catch you Trust God enough to catch you. All the Lord is waiting on you to do is to trust him enough. God will always trust you, always catch you. In the story, the nutritionist was my mom. And the nurses cleared the way. They cleared the path for her. It's amazing how God will orchestrate your life 
if you make your ears hypersensitive to what it is that he's telling you to do. Stop having the spirit of comparison, looking at other people's lives and what they're all they're doing. God is already working it out. He already has a purpose and a plan for you. He already has a plan. When you spend your life comparing to what everything is doing because God tells you what he's going to do for you, he's going to do it. But it may not go like little Johnny's life is going. But when you make your life hypersensitive, imagine if she wouldn't have gotten up. She would have had a heart attack in the hotel and been dead. But because somebody said, clear the way, clear the path. Imagine what somebody said. When we were in college, we played this game, and my friend Angela is going to come up as I demonstrate something to you. When I was in college, we played this game, and it was called Catch Ball. And in college, I don't know if y'all know it or not, but I, I just, I just had fun in college, so <laughs> I don't know if y'all can tell. But we played this game in college, and it was called catch ball. And literally, what it was was that you fell backwards, you released your control, your feet left the ground. And you yelled, catch ball. Yeah. And literally, we would be in Walmart with our friends. <laughs> and we wouldn't get, our audience was, we wouldn't tell nobody. We wouldn't, we wouldn't tell each other that we was doing it. We would just yell out, catch ball. <laughs> and I had the time of my life falling back because literally we wouldn't tell each other we would just it would just be at the spot of the moment and what i learned from that thinking back on it yeah was that fear is removed within Come on. when you know and that you have trust in the person that's going to catch you